the Bible Rocks. And today's installment actually deals with ammunition. Now, this may not look like ammunition, may look like just a stone. But with the story I'm going to talk to you about today, this really is ammunition. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to tell you about when I was a kid. Um, my brother and I had read the story in the Bible that I'm going to get to in a moment, and we decided that we would make slings, which is a leather pouch and strings, and what you do is you put the stone in it, and you swing it around, and when you release it, it really becomes lethal, and it goes very, very hard. And we actually got pretty accurate when I was a kid. We did very well. My mother always said, go further from the house before you do those things. But she didn't realize how far we were throwing them because we could throw them a long ways and get pretty accurate. But anyhow, studies have shown that a rock this size, which is a little bit smaller than a golf ball, but approximately golf ball size, has the same energy as a nine millimeter pistol. And that's if it's thrown by a small child. If you put that into the hands of an adult, they can probably fling a rock more in the double to triple energy of that, more like a 44 Magnum, which is a pretty serious load. Um, and if you look at a warrior from the days when they actually used these, which was pretty much through a lot of history, they would have used not the little rocks, they would have used a serious stone. And imagine if this can give you the power of a magnum handgun, imagine what something like this would do when it strikes. We'll get to that in a moment. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, we get to the story that possibly is one of the most famous Bibles in the story, outside of the story of Jesus. This is the story of David and Goliath. We have all sorts of misconceptions about this, but I'd like to talk through this just a little bit with you. First of all, this story takes place in the area that we now know as Gaza. And it was there that the Israelites and the Philistines were going against each other, and they've been doing this actually for generations. And um, at this point, there was a valley with hills on both sides. And on one hillside were the Israelites, on the other hillside were the Philistines. And in between was this valley that was kept empty. And then we get the story there that Goliath, who was the champion of the Philistines, would come out on a daily basis and he would ridicule all of Israel, ridicule Saul, the king of Israel, ridicule the God of Israel. And this went on and on and on. But because Goliath was so terrifying, he was such a, an enormous man. How big? Well, he was a descendant of Anak or the Nephilim. And the Bible says that he was nine and a half feet approximately tall, six cubits and a span. And um, you go, oh, that's crazy to think about that. Well, if you go back a little further in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11, we have the re record of another one, a guy named Og, who was a king in Bashan. And it says in Deuteronomy that um, he died, but he had an ornate bed decorated with metal 13 feet long because Og was so big. So it was not unheard of in those days to have such incredibly big men. But um, Goliath was not only big, he was the champion. And he was a terrifying warrior who was yelling at and intimidating or trying to intimidate the Israelites. He was so big that he, the mail that he wore, the um, armor that he wore, which they called scale armor, which I'll get to in a second, that weighed 125 pounds. His spear was like a weaver's rod and the spearhead itself was 15 pounds. Think about that, that's incredible. But the scale armor, it was probably made like scales because the god of the Philistines was Dagon. We heard about that a few rocks ago where um, the Ark of the Covenant was there and Dagon fell down in front of it. That's the same god, that's the same people who had captured the Ark of the Covenant. So back to the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. 
Goliath, this enormous man, would come out, this giant would come out and ridicule Israel. Now that had been happening, and David had brothers that were in the army, and his father sent him with supplies to the front line. And when he got there, he heard Goliath down there ridiculing God and Israel. And he said, what's the deal? Why are you letting him get away with this? Our God is greater than their God. And they said, he's terrifying. So David went to Saul, who was the first king of Israel, and he said, Saul, I'll be glad to take care of this guy for you. Now we have this picture, we have the flannel graph stories of this little boy named David going up against Goliath. It's not quite the way it was. Because you see, King Saul, when he was anointed as king, they said he was not only a very handsome man, but he was also a head taller than anyone else in Israel. So Saul was a large man by the standards of those days. And when Saul agreed to let David go out against Goliath, realizing the loser of that one-on-one -on -one battle, their whole side would become slaves of the other side. So Saul wasn't going to send out this little kindergartner. But David said, I can take him in the power of God. And Saul said, all right, if you're going to do that, you need to wear my armor. Now, if Saul was that big and tall, he's not going to put his armor on a, on a little guy. Now, this makes perfect sense to us. In a day and age when um, we have college football players that are 17, 18, 19 years old, that are as big as they are, we shouldn't be surprised that David could be a very mature young man, even at 17 or 18 or whatever. So they gave David Saul's armor and he said, ah, this just doesn't feel right. And besides, when I've had lions and bears come after my flock, I've taken care of them through the power of God with just my hands. And um, so David went out to face Goliath. Now when he went out there, Goliath came out because he was out there ready to yell at the Israelites and intimidate them. And David came out and, saw, uh, and Goliath said, what am I, a dog that you send a boy with just a stick? because he could see that David didn't have armor, he didn't have the helmet, he didn't have all the normal things that are a part of battle. And David said, I'm coming out in the name of God and in his power. And as he came up toward Saul, or came up toward Goliath, he took his sling and stone. Oh, by the way, he had stopped in the bottom of the valley and picked up five smooth stones. And he took one of those stones and he began to do this. And when he whipped it, that stone went up and struck, struck Goliath in the forehead. Whether it killed him or not, we don't know. It may have just stunned him so that he fell to the ground. But the next thing David did after that was he went up and pulled Goliath's sword and beheaded Goliath. Once again... If David was a little boy, think about what Goliath's sword would be like. If his spear was like a weaver's rod, if his armor was 125 pounds, I'm guessing that was more than a little knife. And he took that sword and used it. At that point, all of the Philistines ran, and Israel then conquered them. Part of this that's very interesting is that um, the scale armor probably represented worshiping Dagon, who was a serpent, a snake. They were supposed to have gotten rid of all of them. Joshua and Caleb and all the others were supposed to have gotten rid of all of those enemies that were in the promised land. They didn't. But finally, David cut off the head of the serpent, just like in eternity, Jesus is going to behead Satan, the great serpent. Now, there are a couple of lessons we can take from this. Um, they didn't get rid of the Philistines, and as a result, they came back and became giants that Israel had to try to conquer. If you let sin remain in your life instead of repenting and confessing, it's going to grow up into a giant that could kill you. But God's in the business of slaying giants. 
The third thing is Satan is going to try to ridicule you and make you think you can't win, which is what Goliath did against Israel for all those days before David came up in the name of the Lord. And it wasn't David's power. It wasn't David's guile. It wasn't David's armor or sword. It was the name of the Lord and the power of God that whipped Goliath. So, whatever you have in your life that you think is impossible, go at it in the name of God and in his power because he's in the business of slaying giants. And by the way, if you want to find out about slinging stones, there are all sorts of interesting videos on YouTube that can show you how to do this. But like my mom said, if you're going to do that, stay away from the house. The Bible rocks, and so do all the stories in it.